Grandad, what was it like in the days before databases? Well, it was all a lot slower then, and storing data took up a lot more space. Let me explain. We used to use flat files, and that was the only format a long time ago when I was young. Here the data is arranged by item. So, for example, if we wanted to record the sales information in a sweet shop, we might have different lines with all the information about each sale on. So we might say, oh, the date is, the time was, the product, and what we sold it for was this, and then another line for the next item that we sell, and so on. In this example, each row would have four columns, a date, time, product, and price. The row is split into columns, and each piece of data starts in the same column. In this example, the product being sold might start in column 18 and always stop in column 47. We can then write a computer program to extract the data because we know where each item is in each line. Whilst this works, and it was used for decades, there are some significant problems. What happens if somebody spells Mars bar with two R's? Or with a little m? We would then have more than two products instead of the one that we would want. What happens if we record a single sale of 250 grams of Wix's best special popcorn flavoured toffee and the name of the product is now too long for the space provided? Maybe we should shorten it to 250 grams of Wix's popcorn toffee. But then we must make sure that we always use this abbreviation. Then what would happen if we wanted to add a column to show which salesperson made the sale, for example? We would have to change all the records and make sure our program still worked, as well as change the program. This type of file is still used where the quantity of data is small or its contents are fixed. For example, you might have a text file containing the names and abbreviations and dialing codes for all the countries in the world. Whilst this does change occasionally, it'd be quite easy to hand edit it, and holding that in a database may not be worthwhile. So what is a database? A database is where large volumes of data can be stored. If you don't want to store a lot of data, then use a text file. The data in a database is not stored as text, it's stored in its own format. Each make of database has its own internal format, making it impossible to switch from one to another easily. You just see a list of codes if you try to open a database in a text editor. It wouldn't make any sense at all. The database doesn't only hold data. It also holds information about how the data is laid out. This is called metadata. So it would have lists of primary and foreign keys, the links between the tables. It would have pieces of code used repeatedly. These are called procedures. Pieces of code that are run when something specific happens when processing the data. These are called triggers, as well as all sorts of other items. None of this is transferable between different database management systems, which you'll often see written as DBMS. The trick is to use structured query language. SQL, or sometimes called SQL. All database management systems use SQL as the programming language. And the SQL is the same in each. Hey! However, there are some minor but crucial differences, such as where to use double quotes or single quotes. But the language and its structure are the same. And there's more good news. There are only seven commands Unlike other high-level languages, where there can be hundreds of commands, this makes learning and using SQL much easier.